We've got heat treat connectors, we've got splices, we've got lug connectors, we've got solder stick connectors, we've got those things right there, as well as some wing nuts, just so we can talk about this kind of a problem here. We'll also talk about a few of the different crimpers that you can use, but this right here is something that you never want to see on a boat. And that is because if you look at this, there is one connector, two connector, three connector, four connector, five connectors, six connectors, seven connectors, eight connectors. There are eight connectors just on these two wires. So between two lights, we have eight connectors. That is a very, very bad thing. If you ever want to have an electrical problem on your boat, then have eight connectors on two wires between two lights. It's a very bad thing to do. You're gonna have all kinds of problems with it. And so that is why we're gonna go over all these connectors and all the different ways that you can crimp them and the styles, where to use them and where not to use them. So as far as I'm concerned, anything like this should never be used on a boat. I know what people like to do is they will take a wire nut and they will put two wires together, then they will put silicone in the cap to waterproof it, I guess you would say. That's a bad idea, never do that. And then anything like this, None of this should ever be on a boat. That connector is not waterproof. It's just a failure point. You're going to have problems. Um, the only time, and especially this, you never want to use anything like that. An open-ended connector, that is a bad idea for a boat because a boat is always moving and these will eventually loosen up and you will have problems. So never use anything like that. The only exception that I could ever come up with is for one of these right here because it is very difficult to find a heat shrink spade connector in a heat shrink, kind of like, um, kind of like this right here. So you see how this is a heat shrink, but it is a female spade connector. Well, you can very, very seldom find those with this small of a style. So you see the difference? And if you look on the back of like a speaker, most speakers are going to have a real small spade connector like that. And that is the only time that I would say that you would wanna use something like this that is not a heat shrink on a boat. Other than that, I would probably throw all of this away. This is all useless. I mean, this, you should never use that on a boat. Unless you are looking to have a problem, then I guess, yeah, if you wanna have a problem, go for it, use something like that. So now that we got that out of the way, just to get it out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about some of the most common things. Um, these are just your normal heat shrinks. They are by gauge. So for a pink connector, your pink connector is gonna fit on a 22 to an 18 gauge wire. And that is gonna be a female spade connector. And we're going to have a male spade connector. Those two fit together. And then you will have ring terminals that will come in variable sizes based on how big the ring terminal is. Same thing, blues are gonna fit a 16 to 14 gauge wire and they will come in the same variances of female spades and male spades and then different size ring terminals based on what you want to put them on and then yellow is going to be your 12 to 10 gauge wires all these are heat shrink connectors you will have spades and ring terminals and then you will have butt splices where you can put two wires together and then crimp these down. We'll talk about crimping these in a minute with all of these different crimping tools. But before that, we want to talk about solder sticks. Sizes are gonna be yellow, same, same gauges, 12, 10, 16, 14, 22, 18, and then white is gonna be 26 to 24. Now the thing about a solder stick is that it's going to be different than a crimp because these, you do not need to crimp them. You basically are going to put a wire together, we're gonna to put it in there and then you heat it up and it will solder the wire together. So let's do that real quick before we talk about crimping these other things. So for the solder stick, you just kind of like open this up a little bit, this wire, kind of like that. You open this one up just a little bit, kind of like that. And then you're going to stick this in to the connector. And then we're gonna stick the other end into the other side. Get that kind of in there. And then they go together. 
like that push the two together so that way they're right in the middle of each other you've got all the strands mixed together like that and then there are two ways to do a heat shrink connector most people like a heat gun and then other people like to do it with a torch it all is going to depend on how comfortable you are with it if you use fire then the kind of the main issue is that you can burn it and get it too hot if you get it too close but um, if you're patient with it you can do the fire i mean heat gun works same thing so basically I'm just going to heat this up and then just like that you can see how it is pretty much all soldered and now you have the solder all the way through the strands and it is all connected these are actually super cool i mean they really work really well for what it is um, no heat or anything like that so it does make a pretty good connection too now let's do this again using just the fire though so as you can see you can do either you know the torch or the heat shrink um, heat guns obviously better this is a lot easier they do make battery powered heat guns so you know your choice doesn't really matter whatever you kind of got on hand uh, a lot of people like to keep a lighter on the boat and some connectors just for that point like that but we will let this sit uh so you can see we'll give this a little you know tug as far as tension with this being like this we're gonna let that sit for a little while and talk about some of the other connectors and then we'll come back and pull this apart to see how strong this is uh, once you let it dry and um, cure like this once you get past the 10 gauge then you get into needing to use something like this these obviously are for battery terminals these are for lugs uh, this set here just goes down to a 8 gauge um, this this kit here only goes down to a 6 gauge so you've got different sizes here's a 6 gauge by SC25 uh, basically quarter 5 16 3 8 stuff like that and then also these are going to be your splices so you won't be able to use a butt splice like this on a six gauge wire you're going to need to get to something like this these do not normally come with heat shrinks i think you can get down to a six gauge uh, but with a heat shrink but when it comes to crimping something like that crimping a heat shrink connector is going to be different than crimping something like this this is a lot more heavy duty for bigger wires and then you will definitely need to cover them with heat shrinks um, i like to use a lot bigger piece of heat shrink than just these little things but this is just a one of the kits to kind of show you what these do they're basically splices for eight gauge and below now whenever you go to crimp these this is probably the best way is going using something like this, this is a pneumatic hydraulic crimping tool um, comes in you can get these cheap harbor freight amazon and comes with all of your different ends for you know six gauge 10 gauge 16 25 you know two gauge four gauge uh, you can go really really big and it makes it super simple for crimping once you crimp an end with one of these the best way is to solder it before you heat shrink over it but um you know people do things different ways so those are, are basically what those are used for larger gauge stuff steering systems engine battery terminal connectors all those kinds of things now when it comes to crimping them this is probably the best tool that you can find for crimping this is an anchor um, gives you your yellow blue red and then green for super small stuff but it is you know you you squeeze it and it locks up locks up locks up and then you squeeze it all the way and it releases this is the best for heat shrink connectors you need to know the difference between something like this this if you look at it you've got one point here and two roundeds the two rounded is for non insulated or the two rounded is for insulated and this little notch is for a non insulated crimp so it's important to note that whenever you're using different things like these to crimp these hand crimpers the one with the notch is for non-insulated you want to use this one 
but these right here depending on who's doing it will a lot of times same thing for this even though that is flat uh, you can see how it says insulated and non insulated um, even though that is flat and that is um, not these will still pierce through your heat shrink and we'll go ahead and do a demonstration here so if I take a blue buck connector and I'm gonna crimp a wire together over here let me show you what happens when you use something like this compared to the other set so when I put this into the connector and I use these and I crimp this thing down and I squeeze it hard if you notice it has broken through the heat shrink um, a lot of times when you heat it up that will self correct itself but let me show you what happens when we use the other crimper. So put it in here, get it right to the edge, and then just squeeze it, and it releases, and boom, did not cut through the heat shrink. Now, this is obviously going to be the strongest because it is a crimp. When you heat this up, that is the next problem, especially when people use fire you heat it up like this you have to be careful not to get too close and you want to roll it otherwise you will melt the heat shrink and it will get down to the metal which makes it worthless so the best thing you need time or use a heat gun opposed to fire actually i did a really really good job with uh, both crimps neither one of them cut through the heat shrink so um that was a very bad example but that's probably the only downfall to using something like this is most people will crimp through the heat shrink even though that time I didn't. So that's the thing about these. These will not break through the heat shrink whereas these sometimes you can depending on who's doing it. Again, you can use both ones and neither one. As long as you heat it up properly, you're not going to melt the heat shrink away and it's going to give you a waterproof seal. Again, this is crimped, so this is basically, you know, the wire broke. So in order for this to break, the crimp did not fail, the wire broke. I pulled the whole wire off of it. So whereas this one here actually is pretty much the same thing. I can't pull this apart, and that was the solder stick. So given this, I can't I can't pull it apart so um, I'm obviously I could pull this apart if with enough strength let me roll it over and there so I can finally pull it apart but obviously you're not gonna have that kind of tension on just a normal connector so these are actually super impressive as far as the you know pull strength that you're gonna get out of a crimp that you did not need to use any kind of crimping tool you just have to heat them up so the solder sticks are super cool in that aspect and they do they work really really well as um, you know for what it is I think it's super strong even compared to this obviously a crimp is gonna be more permanent than the solder stick but I mean this was I had to wrap my finger around this and then pull through in order to break this um, deal. And yes, I know that there are better cutters, wire strippers than these. I cannot find mine that you squeeze and automatically do it. The Kleins, I will put those up as a screenshot because those are way better than having to do it like that, but I cannot find mine. So again, these are the best. Super easy. As you can see, heat gun, very similar to the fire. You can see how it's heated out to there. Permanent crimp, you're never gonna break that. Um, the wire's gonna break before that. Solder stick, will pull out with you know enough force, but the amount of force that it requires to break a solder stick is, um, you know, you're gonna break the wire. 